We have had improvements to the visuals on Warzone during Vanguard's reign of Warzone, whether that's on Caldera or the Resurgence maps. But as ever, there's always things we can do on our end to make the game even prettier and all round better in terms of graphics, even on consoles. Not only is this good to make the game look good, but it actually improves our in-game performances, allowing us to spot more enemies and just react quicker to danger. Now obviously on consoles we don't have extensive settings to play with, but there still are some key improvements we can do to improve our setup. And before we even get into the game, there's huge improvements we can make with our TVs, and monitors. Which is where today's sponsor BenQ comes in with their gaming monitor. The Morbius EX2710U allows gaming up to 144Hz refresh rate, i.e. 144 frames per second, and has a super low latency of 1 millisecond, and that's within 4K resolution. So you can get instant input onto your monitor and you can have this at insanely high specs. On top of this, it has FreeSync Premium Pro, allowing frame rates to be matched to the ups and downs of your system, meaning no tearing will happen even in HDR. And mixed in with its HDR600 ability, it just gives the smoothest feeling. In addition to the insane graphic support, there's also inbuilt light tuning and colour vibrance, which makes games absolutely pop, balancing those bright and dark areas. There's also high dynamic range, or HDRI tech, in here too, meaning the colours absolutely pop even without any tuning. Using this alongside the eye care features, you really get the benefit of gaming for hours, but avoiding fatigue. Finally, to top it all off, the BenQ EX2710U even comes with some great 2.1 inch built-in speakers and an AI noise cancelling microphone, meaning you could even game without a headset and still have great audio. It really feels like I've gone into the future with this monitor, now that I'm playing at double the frames that I was previously, with over a billion colours in that dynamic range and just the smoothest ride. If you want to know more about the BenQ 2710U monitor, then go down to the description and check out the links there. Moving back on to how you can improve your graphics on Warzone using your monitor though, try heading over to the inbuilt modes on your monitor. These are often brilliant, particularly for first person shooters. Then have a play around with different settings around colour and sharpness. There isn't a perfect setting I can share for everyone for this sadly, since we all have different monitors. Thankfully using this BenQ monitor at the minute, their FPS mode hasn't required me to do much more tweaking. Okay, now let's talk about how to maximise our frames per second on Warzone. For next gen consoles, or current gen consoles, whatever you want to call them, i.e. the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, they can all run Warzone on 120 frames per second now. To ensure this is enabled on PS5, go into graphic settings and enable 120Hz output as auto. Then on the main system settings, select saved data and game slash app settings and change your game presets to performance mode. By turning these settings on, your PS5 will automatically play games at 120 frames per second if that game is supported. On Xbox Series X and S, we head into settings, then general TV and display settings, then we can put the refresh rate to 120Hz. For last gen consoles, sadly you are still capped at 60 frames per second. And of course everybody is capped at whatever their monitor is capable of. Most people have a 60 to 75 hertz refresh rate if they're casual gamers, meaning they can only get a maximum of 75 frames per second, and often if you have got 75 hertz, you can actually only run 60 frames per second because that's what's supported. Unfortunately, this means if your console or other hardware like your PC is performing at those higher frame rates, it's basically meaningless unless you upgrade your monitor too. Which is the problem I had until I recently upgraded to this BenQ EX2710U monitor I've been banging on about. I wasn't really experiencing the power that my hardware had. Getting a better monitor capable of higher refresh rates and quality is a great way to not only improve your setup now, but also future-proof yourself for when there are inevitable improvements to hardware and games. So now that we've got our monitors and consoles running in harmony, 
let's head over to the in-game settings on Warzone. To do this, we open up settings, go across to graphics, and then click again to open up accessibility. Brightness is one of the most important settings we can control on console. Thankfully, at the moment, you can basically follow the advice Call of Duty give in the menu screen. So when you get to that barely visible Modern Warfare sign, you actually want to make it barely visible like Call of Duty wants. And this is fine because there really are few dark areas of the map at the moment. Again though, if you do have fine-tuning lighting options on your monitor, you may just want to use that and leave this in-game setting. Nevertheless, I'm running a 55 at the moment for my brightness, and I think for most of you, that should work well too. This is great because we used to have to crank it right up to about 65 or higher on Verdansk because some of the corners were really that dark. The downside to this, of course, was that the brighter parts of the map would then become completely washed out and saturated. Now on to colorblind settings, which we can change both on the game and on our consoles. This again is where some of the biggest visual changes are made. But if you have light settings on your monitor, it's not worth changing these too much. The colorblind settings though really do offer a quick way to make all of the maps on Warzone look better, and that's with the Deuteranopia colorblind setting. Protonopia has too many greens and looks a little dull, and Tritonopia tinges everything in red. Deuteranopia on the other hand I just think allows some areas of the map to pop out where you can decipher the difference between common colors a little bit better. It works very well with the natural color palette of the map, and actually takes advantage of it. On top of these in-game settings, you can correct your color settings on your console too. On the Xbox Series X and S, we can go to general settings, then video fidelity, then increase the color depth bits per pixel. This isn't colorblind settings exactly, but it does offer us a bigger palette. The PS5 has further colorblind settings through accessibility, again where you have the choice of Deuteranopia and Tritonopia, if you do want to emphasize those color palettes even more. Next up for in-game settings is camera movement, which I always recommend to put down to 50%, which is the lowest it can go. You might think this makes the game look a little bit less realistic, but I promise you, you will be able to spot people that little bit easier, and at the same time, you won't become seasick. And the exact same can be said of motion blur and film grain. Just turn these off, go as low as you can go. They can make the game look amazing and pretty cool, to be honest but you are gonna miss things. Maybe when you're playing campaign or anything single player, you can put these settings on and enjoy them that way, but for multiplayer, get them off. They can cause you to miss certain things, and sometimes noticing an enemy a few milliseconds quicker is the difference between killing and dying and winning and losing. Okay, now lastly, let's talk about the visual quality of the graphics on Warzone. Aside from just the console or monitor which dictates what quality you play on, for example, I now play at 1440p and 120Hz, on Xbox Series X thanks to my BenQ EX2710U monitor compared to 60 frames per second and 1080p previously. Aside from those kind of improvements, there's the settings option on demand texture streaming. You can put this on high quality if you've got a good enough connection to allow the extra bandwidth to be sent to stream those higher quality textures. This does improve the graphics and from what I can tell has minimum impacts on your latency and connection if you have a good connection. Of course, if you haven't got the best connection, you can go for the standard quality or even disable the option altogether. This also might be the best option for you if you simply want the absolute best connection possible when playing and don't care too much about how pretty the map is. And a little disclaimer, by the way, if you ever have any visual bugs or glitches when playing any of the maps on Warzone, disable this setting and for some reason it usually sorts out those problems. For this setting I usually go on high quality because I do have a wired connection. And now I can actually take full advantage of those high definition textures coming into my screen. Now that you've got your game looking beautiful, the last setting we need on console is you guessed it, an FOV slider. Well, check out this video where I go over whether we're likely to have an FOV slider on console in Warzone 2. 